Hello and welcome to Hygromatic. My name is Gepard Makra and we are in the presentation room here at Hygromatic. Today I would like to demonstrate the fast and easy maintenance of an electric heater steam generator from our heater line series. Before I begin with the actual maintenance of the unit, I first need to make sure that the water is drained from the steam cylinder. To do so, I press and hold the control switch in position 2. After the water is drained, I disconnect the unit from the power supply and secure it against being restarted. You want to avoid being at the unit when all of a sudden the power could come back on. Now I can open the cover with the key. I can take off the right side. The right side, that's the electrical side. You can see here, here are all the electrical connections, supply connections. I will now again verify with the voltage tester that there is in fact no electrical current anywhere on the unit. To do so, I will go to the main contactor and check if I can detect any electrical current. No, I can't. I'm sure that there really can't be any electrical current on the steam side, on the left. Then I take off the left cover and we have access to the steam side. You can see we have purposely put a sticker on here, meaning caution hot surface, and please before you touch it, check from a distance how hot it actually is. I begin by disassembling the cylinder, by first loosening the star screws up top here. And then here, at the steam hose connector, that's the white plastic piece, I pull off the clip, I place it up here at hand, I can reuse that shortly, and now I can already pull off the steam hose adapter together with the hose up at the top and out. I now take the clip again, attach it up here, and then have my hands free so I'm able to handle the cylinder. Next step is to unfasten the cylinder clamping belt. Pull off the system connector. Then I can disassemble the cylinder with a light twisting motion. I can then take it out. For cylinder maintenance, we open the cylinder on top at the clamping ring. Then we can pull up the cylinder top and have the heating element out as well which is connected to the cylinder top. You can tell that both the heating element and the cylinder still look very good. There's very little calcium residue. Normally you would find a little more, which of course all depends on the length of time the steam humidifier has been in operation. To remove the scale deposits, we would, if there's relatively little calcium residue, take a screwdriver, take the shaft end and moderately tap around on it. The scale deposits will loosen bit by bit and chip off in flakes, and we can continue working at it like that. What you shouldn't do is to try with a knife to scrape around on this to try and get it metallic bright. That would destroy the heating element. Please do not do that. When dealing with larger amounts of calcium deposits, which you might not be able to remove mechanically, we recommend placing the whole thing in a cleaning bath. Normally, the cleaning agents have a certain acid content. Please make sure the acid content of the cleaning bath does not exceed 10%. When working with an acid bath, you would normally prepare the bath in a bucket and then just submerge the heating element for a certain duration. You can see how the calcium deposits dissolve. And when the heater elements are free of scale again, especially the areas between the coils, then just take it back out. The same applies for the stainless steel steam cylinder. You can first clean it mechanically, which should be enough in most cases. Should the deposits be too tough, you could place the cylinder in a cleaning bath as well. After we have cleaned the cylinder, we reassemble the whole thing. When reassembling, the O-rings should be replaced. 
In, in this O-ring set, set finden Sie einmal you will find one black, large O-ring. This O-ring goes up here, and the area with the clamping ring will later clamp together the cylinder to the cover. The small black O-ring is the one that is used up top for the connection to the steam hose adapter. And finally we have a white O-ring, that is the silicon O-ring, which will be used later when the steam cylinder is placed in the base. Okay, I'm going to reassemble this again. To get the O-ring out of the top part, I will simply use a screwdriver and just lever it off, and then take the new O-ring and place it up top here. Then I can reassemble everything. After we have performed maintenance on the stainless steel cylinder, back at the unit we have to take a look at the base because naturally calcium deposits could have been collecting there if we have been working with regular tap water. To maintain the base we need to take out the coarse insert strainer. To better illustrate, I have a model of the base with the strainer. We can take a look into that. In order to be able to pull out the strainer quite easily, we have these finger or access holes. That is where you can catch it with your finger and pull out the strainer easily. When the unit has been running a certain time and calcium deposits have been produced, this will of course be filled with deposits and have some weight to it. That's why we have added the access holes. The strainer is cleaned from limescale deposits, emptied. These holes here, please clear them out. And then very important, the inner part of the base itself must be freed of calcium deposits. We have here these passes for the hose connections. Water flows into the cylinder there. And it's especially important that here on the inside, where the water exits, that these areas are thoroughly cleaned and the deposits get out of there. After we've cleaned all that, we can reassemble it. And to do that, it is important that the strainer is placed in the right position. We have some help for that, and that is this here little lug nose, and this here groove, and these two need to be latched together. So I will place them together. It goes click, and then it sinks down properly, and is just in the right position. Besides the stainless steel cylinder and the base, we must go about checking the little control cylinder and dismantle the float switch there. Because here too, it is very important that no residue, no calcium deposits are on the float switch itself. To do so, I just unfasten the four screws on top here. Then I can pull out the float switch. On top here, there is only one other small flat seal in between. Here we have the float switch. What you can see very well, we have the two floaters that can rise with the water. The lower floater covers two conditions. One is the dry run, and the other one is the humidification or operation level, which we would like to get to. Then the heating elements are safely covered in water. The upper floater only knows one position, that's up here at the stopper, and would simply inform us if in some scenario too much water is in the system, and then it would shut down. To clean the rod assembly, you can use some cloth, for example, combine it with lime scale remover, and then to remove all calcium residue from here completely, because these floaters must be able to float without resistance. After I've done that, the condition I would like to have is a metallic sheen. I can reassemble the whole thing. I can very well use the flat seal again because it will definitely seal tight. I just have to make sure that there is no coarse residue on top here. Otherwise, it will be hard to get it to seal right. After we've cleaned everything, I reassemble the cylinder. To do this, I must, however, still replace the O-rings. I have, for one, the large O-ring, the silicon O-ring, here for the base. You will notice that it is a bit oversized, but that is important in order for it to seal tight. 
And up here in the steam hose adapter, we have another O-ring, which we will insert. Up here there is a little groove. Now the O-ring is seated right. I'm making it a bit wet, the O-ring. There is always a little water in here. I can use it. So all that will come together better in a moment. And now I can take the steam cylinder and place it back. You will need to use just a little bit of pressure and will notice when you have gotten down to the hilt. Now I secure the whole thing with a clamping belt. And can then again up at the top connect the steam hose adapter, remove the clip. Connect the steam hose adapter. Don't forget the clip. Clip it up here. And then all that remains to do on this side is to plug in the system connector. And of course we have our star screws left up here, which we need to fasten. Find the right position. And then just refasten the screws. Then I make sure that no hoses are jammed in anywhere, no wires are jammed. Leakage I can't make out at this time. Everything looks to be in order so far. I would now reconnect the power supply, let the unit run a test phase for about 5 to 10 minutes, just check if there's any leakage anywhere. That would be important to be able to disqualify that. Yes, and now I have waited 5 to 10 minutes. The unit has filled itself with water. We have a request for the unit. It is now producing steam. I monitor during this time if somewhere there is leakage in the lower area. Check the hoses, check the O-rings I have replaced. But it all looks quite okay so far. The unit can operate like this. Finally, please don't forget to put the covers back on. We have live components up in here. It should not be possible that someone can touch it anywhere. Yes, so far that's it.